Hello students, welcome to our discussion on the topic comparative development experiences of India and its neighbors. By neighbors, we will focus on Pakistan and China. After listening to this talk, you will be able to learn the following. Number one, get an insight into the path of development of India, China and Pakistan. Number two, appreciate the historical background of the development strategies in these countries. Number three, analyze and compare development indicators in India, China and Pakistan. Number four, enhance awareness of level of human development in these countries. Number five, get a comparative view of the development strategies in these three countries. We will proceed this way. After giving a brief background, we will focus on historical footprints. We will give a snapshot of this that will be followed by a comparative analysis of the development indicators and the strategies in these countries. Come to the background. Over the few past decades, globalization has brought huge economic transformation in most countries of the world. It has compelled nations to strengthen their economies to face the challenges of global competition. As a result, the process of opening up domestic markets to global competition has speeded up development during last three decades. Nations are forming regional and global groupings like SARC, European Union, ASEAN, G8 and so on in order to strengthen regional their basic domestic economies. During these decades, concerted efforts were made by various governments in India, China and Pakistan to bring these countries at par with development taking places across the world. These nations are divided by geographical boundaries, though they have cultural similarities. India, Pakistan and China began their journeys on the path of economic development almost at the same time, while India and Pakistan emerged as independent separate nations seeking freedom from British colonialism in 1947, China established as People's Republic of China in 1949. This module studies the process of development in India and its experiences in comparison with its close neighbors, that is these two countries, China and Pakistan. Come to the historical footprint. First, we will talk about China. Establishment of People's Republic of China in 1949 brought under government control all critical sectors of the economy, enterprises, and lands operated by individuals. A domestic policy was adopted in the early years, that is from 1949 to 1957, which aimed at ensuring national unity, implementing land reforms, educating peasants, restoring production by involving intellectuals and merchants, and preventing alienation relationship between People's Republic of China and United States remained in moderate stance due to hostile political climate. China worked hard at eliminating Western influence on its people, thereby restoring its culture. China entered into a treaty of friendship and assistance with USSR, but the resistance against Japan Soviet occupation of Dalian and recognition of Soviet Mongolia had been tough on China to accept in exchange of economic aid from USSR. Korean War resulted in intensifying 
radical reforms in China. Five year plans was adopted in China in 1953 with an aim of nationalizing all industrial and large commercial enterprises, abolishing all private ownership of resources. The Great Leap Forward campaign was initiated. There was collectivization of lands under the commune system where people collectively cultivated lands. People were encouraged to set up industries in their backyards with the objective of industrializing the country on a massive scale. GLF campaign that is Great Leap Forward campaign met with many problems. A severe drought was there. Russia withdrew its professionals who were sent to help the industrialization process. In 1965, Mao introduced the great proletariat cultural revolution that is between 1966 to 76, under which the students and professionals were sent to work and learn from the countryside. The present day first industrial development of China can be traced back to the reforms introduced in 1978. Economic reforms were introduced in 1978, opening up trade to the external world, enhancing inward investments and increasing exports. In agriculture, commune lands were divided into small plots which were allocated to individual households only for their use and not for ownership. State owned enterprises were made to face competition. Private sector enterprises were encouraged in addition to town and village enterprises apart from sanctioning joint ventures with foreign companies. Special economic zones were set with an objective of attracting foreign investments in 1990. Another feature that made a mark on growth of China is the introduction of one child norm. This had become essential to restrict the ever growing population in the country. Early 90s focused on urban based growth model and first decade of 21st century brought about a shift in exports of cheap goods to high value technical goods. China joined WTO that is World Trade Organization in 2000 and thereafter 95 percent of China's exports were manufactured goods taking over Japan. Outward investments moved ahead of inward investments by 2014 making China's economy one of the strongest economies in the world. Now focus on Pakistan. Pakistan emerged as an independent country in 1947 and adopted economic policies which were very similar to India. Pakistan adopted a mixed economy of coexistence of public and private sectors and a regulated policy framework for import substitution based industrialization during 1950s and 60s. The policy combined tariff protection for manufacturing of consumer goods together with direct import controls on competing imports. The introduction of green revolution led to mechanization and increase in public investment in infrastructure in select areas which led to a rise in the production of food grains. This changed the agricultural sector dramatically. In 1970s, nationalization of capital goods industries took place which was reversed in late 1970s and 80s when major thrust areas were denationalization and encouragement of private sector. Pakistan also received financial support from western nations and remittances from immigrants 
to the Middle East. This helped the country in stimulating economic growth. The government also offered incentives to private sector. In 1988, reforms were initiated in the country. Next come to India's situation, a background of Indian economy. Starting from a scratch, losing most of its productive lands to partition, India had several challenges to overcome at the time of independence in 1947. The adoption of mixed economy and five-year plans have gone a long way in strengthening Indian economy during past decades. Policies in the agricultural sector concentrated on enhancing agricultural production and productivity. Through land reform policies, policies of self-reliance and green revolution. Industrial sector of India received a boost as public sector enterprises focused on import substitution and export promotion. The reforms brought in by globalization, privatization and liberalization policies in 1991 have accelerated the pace of development in human development, growth with equity and employment generation. Post reforms India saw drastic changes putting itself on the path of emerging as one of the fastest growing economy of the world. This has also led to rapid growth in contribution of service sector to the gross domestic product. There was a substantial increase in share of manufacturing sector to the country's GDP. Consistent growth of service sector has made Indian economy resilient to external economic shocks. Investment opportunities are created by growing middle class and its increasing disposable income. India has also become an attractive destination for businesses and foreign direct investments, opening up vast prospects to foreign investment in infrastructure. There are many ventures for global investors in the field of power, ports and roads. India's international trade has increased post reforms, making India one of the largest exporters by 2011. Despite being one of the fastest growing economies, India still remains gripped with socio-economic challenges such as poverty, lack of quality education, inequality and corruption. Now come to the point development indicators in these countries, we will have a comparative analysis. With the brief background of development path of India, China and Pakistan, let us come to the development indicators. Table 1 shows demographic indicators of India, China and Pakistan which you can see. As shown in table 1, the growth rate of population continues to be highest in Pakistan and fairly high in India compared to China. In China, the adoption of one child norm for three decades could be a major contributing factor for this change. Fertility rate is very high in Pakistan followed by India and China. Low population density has always been an advantage to China as compared to India and Pakistan. China and Pakistan show better signs in urbanization. India is least urbanized at only 33 percent and this implies that both China and Pakistan have been successful in their attempt to generate job opportunities outside agriculture. Estimates show sex ratio in India is 929 females per 1000 males followed by China which is which has 941 and Pakistan 
which has 947. These figures portray social backwardness of all three societies. The principal causes being preference for male child and female feticide. Now look at table 2 which gives average growth rate of the GDP in these countries. According to table 2, there has been a remarkable increase in growth rate of India while China and Pakistan saw a decrease during 1980-90 to 2011 and 15. It can also be noted that during 1980 and 90s between this period, China ahead of India and Pakistan had a double digit growth rate which shows a substantial decline during 2011 to 2015. Look at table 3 now. It gives you occupational structure in 2014 and 15. This table shows that dependency on agricultural sector in China is the least followed by Pakistan while 50 percent of Indian population still continue to depend on agriculture. Industrial and service sectors in China are larger as compared to India and Pakistan, giving them an edge towards greater development. Look at table 4. The table shows sector wise contribution to GDP. While least contribution to GDP is from agriculture sector for all three countries, service sector makes the largest contribution in India and Pakistan, portraying an emerging service sector playing a major role in development. Usually, the economic development process involves development of agriculture sector first, followed by the growth of manufacturing sector and later by the growth of service sector. China has followed the normal growth trajectory while India and Pakistan have not shown the same pattern. Come to table 5. It gives you trends in growth in different sectors between the period 1980 to 2013. As we see in this table, during last three decades, growth in agriculture sector employing largest workforce has declined substantially. China failed to maintain a double digit growth rate in its service as well as industrial sectors. India shows an increase in its growth rate of service sector, though manufacturing sector shows a decline. Pakistan shows a decline in growth rate of all three sectors. Look at table 6, which gives some selected indicators of human development for the year 2015. As shown in the table 6, China with 0.73 is in much better position as compared to India at 0.61 and Pakistan at 0.54 in terms of Human Development Index that is HDI. Higher HDI ranking of China at 90 could be due to their policies to limit population growth in addition to the export driven manufacturing sector that add up to its per capita GDP. Higher HDI ranking also mirrors better performance of a country with regard to availability of essential goods and services to the people, improved sanitation facilities, better health services and better nourishment of people. Infant mortality rate is highest in Pakistan and lowest in China, displaying the status of availability of medical facilities and healthcare facilities in these countries. Maternal mortality rate is 27 per lakh births in China as compared to 174 in India and 178 in Pakistan. 
as regards to improved sanitation facilities china registered an improvement from 65% in 2012 to 77% in 2016 which is a remarkable achievement while 47% pakistan population had an access to improved sanitation facilities in 2012 which has increased to 64% in 2016 india was at a dismal state with only 36% of its population having access to sanitation facilities in 2012 which has risen to 40% in 2016 Swachh Bharat Abhiyan is playing a remarkable role in India in this respect. China is ahead of India and Pakistan in reducing the percentage of population below poverty line implying higher GDP, higher per capita income and better human development indicators. The indicators which represent the degree of social and political freedom in a country are referred to as liberty indicators liberty indicators so respect to democratic values and human rights with zero tolerance to any kind of violation of human rights the respect to these values constitutes major component in good governance and in making the society a secure and safe place to explore and grow as an individual political liberty implies active participation in state administration and social liberty implies freedom of speech and expression and other related human rights these indicators are crucial to human development if liberty indicators are to be considered India is in a better position in respect of human development since people respect democratic values and human rights now come to comparison of developmental strategies adopted by these countries we will give a comparative analysis of development strategies here india and pakistan had to introduce economic reforms under tremendous pressure from imf that is international monetary fund and world bank hence both these countries opened up their economies to the world markets under similar circumstances though this affected their infant domestic industries due to competition from world markets this led to subsequent improvement in quality of domestic products in order to sustain competition and retain customers china on the other hand has a different story to tell the maoist vision of sunning foreign technology decentralization and attaining self sufficiency is no longer sustainable thus chinese leaders brought in economic reforms in order to attain a high level of economic social and political development with the objective of being at par with world standards in pakistan reform process led to worsening of all economic indicators in decade of 90s however the proportion of poor in 1960s was more than 40% which declined to 25% in 1980s and started rising again in the 1990s the reason for slow growth and reemergence of poverty in pakistan was that the agricultural growth and food supply were based on good harvest and not on an institutional process of technical change when harvest was good the economy was in better condition and when it was not so good the economic indicators showed negative trends pakistan borrowed from world bank 
and IMF to correct its balance of payments crisis. Foreign exchange is an essential component for any country only if a country is able to build up its foreign exchange earnings by sustainable export of manufactured goods. In Pakistan, most foreign exchange earnings came from remittances from Pakistani workers in the Middle East and export of agricultural products. There was heavy dependence on loans on the one hand and increasing difficulty in paying back these loans on the other. However, at present Pakistan has recovered its economic growth and is able to sustain it. The annual plan 2016-17 reports that the GDP registered a growth of 4.7 percent, the highest in previous eight years. While agriculture growth was not very satisfactory, industrial and service sector grew at 6.8 and 5.7 percent respectively. Many macroeconomic indicators also began to show stable and positive strengths. Let us now summarize whatever we have discussed so far. India, China and Pakistan have travelled almost three decades of development path with varied results. Till late 1970s, all of them maintained the same level of low development. The last three decades have taken these countries to different levels of development. India performed moderately with democratic institutions in place. Still, a large population is dependent on agriculture and infrastructural facilities are insufficient. More than one-fourth of its population lives below poverty line. Pakistan faced slowdown in the initial years, but started showing positive and higher growth rates reflecting the economic recovery. In China, lack of political freedom and its implications for human rights are major concern. However, it has succeeded in raising the level of economic growth along with alleviation of poverty. China has used market mechanism to create additional social and economic opportunities instead of privatizing their public sector enterprises. By retaining collective ownership of land and allowing individuals to cultivate lands, China has ensured social security in rural areas. Public intervention in providing social infrastructure has brought about positive results in human development indicators in China. Thank you.